everybody. Welcome into the Nesson Studios. Michaela Vernava here. Johnny Oddshark on the line. His real name is John Campbell, but I much prefer to call him Johnny Oddshark. John, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I like Johnny Oddshark too. It should have been my birth name. I don't know. I couldn't talk my parents into it. <laughs> yeah, you'll have to get that legally changed. Maybe make Oddshark your middle name or something. But anyway, <laughs> you do have the best betting advice. So I would say you've earned that name. Let's get right into World Cup betting because a lot has been going on. First few days of the World Cup has been really exciting. What's the advice you have for all of us? Well, we, we've seen some big moves in the futures odds already. With Mexico's big upset over Germany, we saw Mexico go from 100 to 1 to 40 to 1, and Germany went up from 5 to 1 to 8 to 1. We've seen some other big moves here. Russia, 60 to 1 down to 40 to 1 after starting with a couple wins as the host nation. England's down to 12 to 1. They were much closer to 20 to 1 when they started. So there's still some good futures value out there. I would take a look at that at the futures value. We we seem to see scoring come in bunches here. We have a day where all the overs come in, then we have a day where all the unders come in. So I would watch for those trends as well. And our Odd Shark supercomputer is 9 and 1 in its last 10 games. So take a look at those picks on the site there before you make your bets. How about as far as celebrations, are there any odds on whether or not there will be any more Richter scale activity in Mexico? Did you see that? They caused an yeah. artificial earthquake. Pretty impressive. Wasn't that incredible? I know. It just shows how much this event takes the nation by storm and takes betters by storm. I think there's a lot, uh, a lot more betting action out there this year. Oh, yeah. Well... As for what's going on here in the United States, the Red Sox are on a bit of a slide. They've lost four of their last five games. As far as putting your money on them, how would you advise? Well, Red Sox better should know that the Red Sox have suddenly become a really good under bet. Well, it's not a really a good thing because they're not having the best June here. But they're 11 and 4 to the under in their last 15 games here. And that's because they've continued to have great pitching while the bats have gone cold. They're hitting just 163 with runners in scoring position in the month of June. And that's not really good. So that's helping the numbers go under the total. Something else to watch for there is some good news here in all of this for Red Sox betters. And that's that the prices will be getting a little better. Red Sox odds will be getting a little bit better because they're not playing that great. So so when they do start to win again, and I do think they will start to win again, it will happen with better prices, and that means a better payout. And now I know football season obviously is still a few months out, but as far as Patriots futures, what's changed now that we have the news of the Julian Edelman suspension? Well, not too much has changed here. The, the Pats are still the Super Bowl favorites around 6-1. to one. They're still 6.5-point favorites in Week 1 against Houston. So not much has changed here, and I think this is Patriots betters looking at it and going, yeah, I mean, you can take whatever player you want. You can even take Brady for four games, and we'll still go win those four games. So the money comes in no matter what seems to happen to this Pats team. But I would be careful here. I, I think Edelman is, is going to be a really important part to this offense this year. He's a thousand yard guy, thousand yards kind of guy. He's Brady's favorite target. Can't really depend on the health of Gronk throughout a whole season. Amendola's gone to Miami. So I think the Pats are really going to need him here. And I think this is a little bit bigger deal than what the odds are suggesting. And I would look maybe to fade the Patriots early on when they're in those favorite situations here. I think there will be an, an impact, even though the odds don't say there will be. All right. Also going on during an off season, lots going on in the NBA. The LeBron James sweepstakes. We talked to you last week about the odds for him to end up in Boston. How are the odds looking now? Because there has been a lot of rumors, a lot of things said. Kawhi Leonard, the Lakers. How has all of this impacted the odds of where LeBron James will end up? Yeah, a lot of rumors swirling out there. And I think the last time we talked, uh, the Celtics were 10 to 1 to be LeBron's next team to start next season here. So those odds have changed a little bit. The Celtics are now 7 to 1. Things sound a little more hopeful there. It sounds like 
they have the ability to make some moves, but the Lakers have now moved into the clear-cut favorite spot there. They're minus 150, so you have to risk $150 to, to win 100 if you think LeBron is going to go to the Lakers. It really sounds like that's where he is going to go, and the futures odds for the Lakers have come way, way down as well here. Uh, so it looks like L.A., uh, but I don't know. Stay tuned. Things change quite a bit here. Definitely keeping things interesting. And as always, great advice from you, John. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next week. Thanks, Michaela.